Hey guys, it's Rich Curtis from M Audio, and today we're going to take a look at the brand new Code Series keyboard controllers. The Code Series come in three different models. We have the 25, the 49 key, which you see here, and the 61 key. The Code Series are a very versatile keyboard controller that you can use to control any aspect of your digital audio workstation or your audio recording software. Let's take a look at the intuitive menu controls. As you can see here, uh, it says pre-02 right on the screen, which means we're on preset 2. Now the code series gives me the ability to save all of these controls into a preset for later recall. To cycle through your presets, we can use the arrow up and arrow down, and you can see that all of my colors are going to change corresponding to the way they're set inside of the preset. Next to that we have a shift modifier key that will come in handy later. We have a channel button which will allow us to choose which MIDI channel that that particular section is outputting on. As you can see, our keys are outputting on channel one. We have our edit button, which is gonna allow us to access these parameter controls down here written right above the keys, and we're gonna get a little bit more into that later. You have your zone controls. The great thing about the Code Series keyboards is it allows you to zone the keyboard into a maximum of four different areas. So we're gonna show you how to do that in just a moment. Below that we have our transport controls, which control obviously play, stop, rewind, fast forward, and record enable. Below that we have our octaving controls, so we have a transpose right in the center, so we can easily transpose up or down by half step. Or we can set our octaves, you can see we have our key octave, and we can go up three levels, and down three levels as well. The key bed is a semi-weighted key bed, it's very high quality, and it also features aftertouch. What does that mean? Well, I have a typical key notes like this, and when I go ahead and I press harder, I can get sort of an articulation out of the key that I don't normally get. So after touch is enabled, and I can set that to control anything, whether it be vibrato, portamento, whatever I want, I can set it to do anything inside the keyboard. So semi-weighted keys, fully aftertouch compatible, and we have the ability on the Code Series keyboards to set zoning, which just basically means I can chop up the keys in the keyboard to control different MIDI channels. And I can use that with hardware, software. Uh, for the case of this, I'm gonna use it with the included software Ableton Live Lite 9. So from here, first thing we're gonna do when we wanna zone our keyboard is we're gonna go ahead and hold down the zone button. And the zone button is gonna allow us to set the key span for that particular zone. So as you can see here, it says C1 to B1, and I want this to go from C1 to B1, just like it says. Um, or I could change to anything. I could do from you know C to D, or anywhere I want. So for this, we're gonna do C to B1, and then I'm gonna press zone two to set my second zone, which is gonna be from C2 to B2. Then I'm gonna press zone three, and go C3 to B3. And the same thing, for zone four, it's at that one I'm gonna go up to C5 with, so we have the whole top octave there. Now we're gonna assign our MIDI channels. For the first zone, we're gonna go back to zone one by pressing zone one, and we can press the channel button. And we can set that to channel one. For zone two, we're gonna set that to channel two, and so on for three and four. Okay, now that that's set up inside our keyboard, we have to set it up inside our digital audio workstation so all the channels are going to the right tracks. So from here, we're gonna go over into one and make sure that's set to channel one. We're gonna go to track two and set that to MIDI channel two and so on for three and for four. Now what we're gonna get is a four zone keyboard setup. You can see here, I have one sound there, but when I go ahead and enable all four of these zones by pressing them simultaneously, I'm gonna get a different sound in my second zone. And same thing, going all the way up. So that's how you do zoning on the Code Series keyboards. Okay, so the knob section, basically you have rotary encoders. They're fully assignable to anything inside your audio software. There are two basic modes, and you can switch between the two modes using this encoder mode button. You can see one's red and one's green, and all that means is in green mode, it's gonna do your standard Mackie Huey control, which will be panning. And then if you go ahead and hit the encoder mode button, now it's in MIDI mode, allowing you to map these eight rotary encoders to whatever you want inside your audio software. The next section is the faders. So you're gonna see you have a set of nine faders and the first one being your master fader. So you always have control over your master levels. And uh, there's a few different modes you can use these in. Uh, there are two buttons over here. One is called fader mode and one is called button mode. Uh, 
The fader mode button will allow you to select between MIDI, Mackie Huey mode, right from here, and you can see in green is gonna be your Mackie mode and red is gonna be your MIDI mode. And then below that we also have a button mode so we can change what those are gonna control at any given time. And you can scroll between Mackie Huey, HID mode, and MIDI. So that way these buttons will control whatever you want at any given time. So all I have to do is I'm set up inside Ableton Live Lite 9 and I've set up the keyboard inside my preferences and you will see that this is, uh, will very simply control my faders in Mackie Huey mode. So I go ahead there and control my faders. Uh, from here I can go ahead and press the button mode and now I am actually inside my HID control which I can set up uh, any sort of interface to do with any part of the computer itself. And then from there I can press button mode again and go back into MIDI and use those to be fully assignable MIDI button controls. Now when you are in Mackie Huey mode, which is the green, I can go into shift and hit B1 and I can choose any one of these four parameters uh, to control my DAW and my tracks. So as you can see, I'll have control over soloing, muting, my track select, and my record arm or disable. So from here, I can go ahead and press B2 and B3 and those will record arm or record disable my tracks. I can hold shift and hit B1 and go to solo mode and this will allow me to solo out different channels inside the track if I want to. Let's go ahead and fast forward into the track a bit. So you can see I'm soloing out my drums or muting them. I can go hit shift and B1 again and I can mute out my drums if I want to very simply. I can also expand or contract my track view as well, right from here on the face of the unit. So as you can see, there's a lot of different controls I can access instantly. So I can control muting, soloing, record arm, all that stuff instantly and quickly. Now, furthermore, we have a bank control here. Now this is gonna allow me to obviously bank from channels one through eight, from nine to 16 and so on infinitely, depending on how many tracks I have in my project. There's also another mode, I can hold shift and hit my bank buttons and what that's gonna allow me to do is to specifically page either MIDI, Mackie Huey, HID, or all different modes when I hit the bank button. So maybe when I banked I just wanted to control Mackie control and just my track volumes and not have that affect my MIDI parameters. I can do that just by holding shift and using my bank buttons there. On the bottom left you can see we have 16 RGB velocity sensitive backlit pads. The pads are backlit and they come in a variety of different colors because they're RGB and you can select and change the colors that these pads are at any given time. We'll show you how to do that in a moment. Um, here you can use these for a lot of different things. Either you can trigger or launch clips inside Ableton Live or for this case what I'm doing is I'm mapping this to an instrument track inside Ableton Live and using it to control my drums. From here I could go ahead and press record on my transport, start recording inside Ableton and lay that drum beat down. Alternatively, if you're not a drummer, you can use these pads to trigger pattern sequences. And you can use that in tandem with the keyboard as well. Now there's a few other things you can do with this. Uh, one of the things to do is you can change the MIDI channel that this transmits on. So these pads are normally transmitting on MIDI channel 10. If you wanted to go ahead and change that, you can simply press edit, you can go to your channel assign and then select the control that you want to change the MIDI output channel on. You can see here it says 10, we can go and use our up and down to change those to whatever we want. Now let's say we want to change the colors of the pads. That's also really simple. You're just going to press edit to go into your parameters menu. And then from here we're going to hold shift and we're going to press this key because you can see on the top there it says color. So we're going to hold shift, press that key, and you can see it says color one. And then we're going to go ahead and select whatever it is we want to edit the color on and then use our up and down arrows to change that color. Now from here we can go and just select the next thing we want to edit the color on and continue till we go all the way through all of the pads. From there, we can go ahead and store that. So what we're gonna to wanna to do is make sure we're in our edit menu, we're gonna press store and enter, and that will be stored inside preset number two for later recall. Okay, so now let's take a look at the XY pad. The XY pad can be used for many different things. It can be used to control MIDI CC, it can be used to control different aspects of your DAW. To change what it controls, it's really simple. Uh, you have these two buttons here, X mode and Y mode. And when they're in red, they're gonna be controlling your standard MIDI mapping that you can assign to anything. We can press those once and we're gonna go into note mode where this is actually gonna control, uh, actually play a note with pitch going across the X axis and the Y axis. 
So you can get a lot of really cool effects using that. Uh, the next mode is your HID mode, which will allow you to uh, control either your cursor or a variety of different commands that you set up previously. Um, and uh, back to your MIDI mode. So those three modes are how you get around on the XY. Now you also have these two assignable buttons, and if you're in HID mode, you could use those to, for mouse clicking or whatever, um, or you can assign them to whatever you want. Uh, for this, I have a standard patch I pulled up here in hybrid. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use my rotary encoders to enable a couple of effects that I have in Ableton Live. And from here, now I can use the XY pad to add some motion and dynamics and expression to my patch. So you can do a lot with the XY pad. It's a really great addition. You're not going to find it anywhere else. But if you want to learn more information, head on over to our website. We're going to link you at the end of this video. And there you can go through our owner's manual and quick start guide to learn even more. Thanks for watching.